Well, I think it's the mystery, the mystery of the universe. So I'm, I'm a big fan of mysteries. From when I was a little kid, I loved this idea of problem solving and finding out things. And this is the ultimate mystery to solve, you know, how the universe works. And the fact that it's even possible to solve that mystery, we haven't solved it all. But the fact that we can even take any kind of steps and access all of that beauty was just amazing. So that's why. And that's something that will never change because the more we actually learn about the universe, the more amazing it becomes and the more there is to learn. So it's this never-ending story. Okay, I'll tell you another story. Back when I was a little girl in India growing up, I remember this one very important event that stands out in my mind. And that was when Rakesh Sharma became the first Indian to go to space. So this was very inspiring. And, and I remember I ran outside and I wanted to see him out there in a spaceship, but of course I couldn't, but I was dreaming about that. And that became part of my sort of, uh, you know, almost like this hidden drive I had saying, I want to follow that. I want to be like, this person who's an explorer and you know do something that is out there literally out there i don't care if it's outer space and i haven't gone there yet but <laughs> so yeah you know I, I i was a little girl i liked building stuff but i you know with lego and things like this but i also liked dolls and i loved playing with dolls and i wanted a doll's house but my parents didn't agree to buy me this fancy doll's house that I had, you know, set my heart on. So I decided that the next best thing would be to build my own. So the, the good thing about that was then I could custom design it and, and have rooms and, and access and, you know, just have it perfect. And, you know, that was my project. I, you know, back then, of course, I didn't realize that the, the most fun part was building it. I mean, of course, I, I enjoyed it so much that I think it became something that sort of was my first real step, maybe unconscious step towards thinking scientifically and, you know, wanting to sort of build stuff or explore stuff. I've gone through periods of, I'd say, denial in the sense that I wanted to be a physicist and prove myself as a physicist. So when I was a student in grad school, I didn't join any women's organizations or anything like that because I, I felt like it was almost like admitting a weakness. To say, yeah, I'm a woman and therefore that's something special. I just wanted to prove myself through physics. Uh, over the years I learned that it's not really an even playing field. <laughs> and so um, I've been able to embrace the fact that you know gender plays an important role in my life and that it is an absolutely critical part of being a physicist as well for me it's not something that i can ignore and it's not something that society ignores either about me so for me now it's not one or the other it's both the heart of quantum physics is uncertainty but it's not uncertainty as in, oh, things are vague and you know, we can't know stuff. It's actually very precise about what we can know. And I think for me, that's how I look at my own identity as well. As in, I, I un sort of define myself within whatever are the parameters that society has laid out at this point. And that, I think, changes. So just like with the uncertainty principle, um, at the quantum level, the, your access to information changes. So how you describe the wave function changes. Uh, it's the same thing, I think, with identity for me. Over time, it's, it's, it keeps evolving. I had this talk, uh, it's a YouTube video of a talk I gave, which is about gender and quantum physics as well. And, you know, I've been always warned, don't read the comments because there's internet trolls. <laughs> but of course, you know, you go and you <laughs> scroll through the comments. And there was this one comment which was very negative. This person said something like, oh, this is all terrible. And this is all just quantum feminism. But, <laughs> you know, I, I think he had a point. <laughs> and it was a nice way to redefine identity, so I'm, I'm going to embrace that and call myself a quantum feminist. <laughs> That's great. This quote from Schultz was about this idea 
that he calls quantum diplomacy, which is based on this quantum principle of measurement, uh, which tells us that measurement in the, at the quantum level involves the observer. So every time you measure something, you disturb the system. So the observer isn't independent from the system. And therefore, there's no such thing as that objective reality. And so you distort reality by being involved in it. And I guess the idea of quantum diplomacy is that, um, yeah, being, being part of any kind of such negotiation, for example, can distort reality. So that, using that con concept leads to the strategy of trying to find in, an independent basis to gather information and then proceed with you know, diplomatic negotiations. And it, it's an interesting idea because uh, it's, it's a way to take a, a concept from quantum physics and apply it to build a strategy for an entirely different purpose. And that sort of inspired me to think about how we can take concepts from quantum physics and apply it to build guidelines that can help create strategies to promote diversity in the physics community. Yeah, the, my own research, we focused on, on trying to observe an individual atom and its dynamics and try to make a connection to this idea of chaos theory, which tells us that at the macroscopic level in certain systems, small changes lead to you know, big impact on the system, so that leads to eventually unpredictability, sort of like with weather patterns. So uh, that's what we observed at the quantum level and saw a quantum version of chaos, which we call quantum chaos. So yeah, that's, that's interesting because there the observation um, was, was a way to access unpredictability, but a classical version of un unpredictability at the quantum level. So it was translating a classical idea into the quantum uh, field. And, in, in, in Schultz's case, it, it goes a little bit the other way, where he's taking quantum ideas and, and applying it in the classical realm, I guess.